Welcome to tutorial one, part two. Uh, since we had the two day shutdown, I thought it best that instead of me being able to answer questions, since we weren't able to at all, I would create another video to help you get a little bit further along the assignment that you can hopefully finish faster than the current October 1st due date that I may be shifting. So for here, there's realize that some of the questions you can't answer yet on the actual task because we haven't covered the information. And I've been concentrating first on that coding question because what you should be doing right now in the beginning of the course is reviewing your old coding skills and getting up to par for this course while we cover new material and before we get to a little bit larger or harder coding assignments. But so far for this task, you should be able to answer question one which is what is an ADT, so that abstract data type, and why it is useful in relation to data structures and programming. And so here you realize that there's three marks. This doesn't again mean that you need to say three things. This is just a waiting for this question for its importance, and you should be writing more than a few basic sentences to show that you're fully understanding what is an ADT. So just giving the quick full abbreviation definition of it, no, you should say, well, why do we have it? Why is it being presented? What does it relate to when it comes to data structures? And then how does it then relate to programming? And then a good one is to maybe bring in your own example to show that you're understanding it within your own words. The next questions here, like the big O, the asymptotic complexity, and the rest of these will be dealt with in the following lectures. Once we cover the Java new and old, we'll be going over asymptotic complexity, and I will also then be giving you guidance on these questions themselves. And then finally down to these last ones at near the end is how to take a piece of code and get your own growth function. But we're going to go back to what we started first, which was question nine, which is a larger, co larger coding question, which in reality is not that large. I made this purposefully small so that you can concentrate on it without being bogged down of the technicality of making a bigger program. But you get the basics of reading and writing from files, working with someone else's code, setting up a general structure to a program, and a few features to implement. And this shouldn't be anything that's too horrible to get done, but it's a good starting point if you're not feeling as confident for your code to start and get this done early rather than leaving it till the last second. So we're going to go back to the code that we started from last time. So remember, I'm not posting the code that I'm typing here. This is best for either you to rewrite stuff yourself or to go through the videos and type it up yourself so you get used to this structure. And it's just one structure that I was suggesting for how to break down the program and go through like what was required. Now with the task two code that you were given, there is still like some examples from reading and writing from files. And where we left off last time, we kind of had a menu running. We had locations for loading all books and for saving books, but we haven't actually completed these features themselves. So this uh, quick video tutorial is going to concentrate on the load all books. So if you haven't watched the first tutorial video, I suggest you go back and watch that one. It's only about a half an hour. You can work your way through that one, typing up the code, and then come back to this video at this point, and we'll concentrate on just reading from files. Now, for this one, again, I'm not going to answer everything. I've already given a lot away for the assignment itself, but in the load all books, the goal here for my demonstration will be just to properly open the file and deal with any errors. We will then go through every line in the file, reading the information, and be able to read it out and separate it into the actual author and title kind of list. Because if we go back and take a look at the example file that you have, here, it has the general format of one line is one book. And so every single line, uh, every single book entry is on a different line. And then we have two pieces of information that are separated by a hash and you're guaranteed there'll be no hash symbols in the names or the title. And what you have is the first thing before the hash is the title of the book. And the second name after the actual hash is the author name. And you may have some leading extra white spaces, some right here after the beginning and end of the books. And it would always be good to clean those up. So we need to be able to open this and load this in from the actual program itself. The program has to always try to open up the reading list dbtxt file. So it doesn't ask for the user for the file name. It just always tries to open this one. So that's why last time we created a constant for it. 
and then if it can't find that file so that file doesn't exist it's just supposed to skip and leave the book list that we have right here empty not adding any actual objects to it now next thing here is I'm not going to do where you make the book objects like we did last time and put the information from the file in and add it to that list. That's a small step that I want you to add yourself into this. I'm only going to get to the point for testing purposes is that I want to load the information, break it apart so I know the title and author, and then actually just echo it to the screen so I can validate first that I got everything right before I move on in the actual program. So the first step here is to actually deal with opening the file. And in Java, there are a ton of different ways to open the file, but we're not doing any fancy kind of parsing or having to use other tools. And so I'm just going to stick with the basic scanner class this time that you've used for all your inputs before, but this time give it a file to actually input it. Now, a bigger thing when it comes to dealing with uh, handling files is you need to go back to your 1502 exception handling info kind of tools, is that we need to deal with the fact that when opening files, instead of just returning an error code, it actually throws what's called an exception, which then the program has to deal with. And sometimes we could rethrow that exception by putting another throw statement up here that something else has to deal with it. But in this case, the point of this method is to load all the books from the file and handle everything. And when it's done, we're back to go on to the rest of the program. And the program, if the file is not there, is supposed to just leave the list empty. So we don't want any of the rest of the program to deal with it. We want to deal with it in here. So we're going to have to have try catch statements and we're going to have to organize properly where we place what code inside a try, what do we have to do in the catch and what code comes after the catch. But for this assignment, I've made it easy because it just says it's supposed to leave the list actually blank uh, if it's unable to open the actual file itself. And I'm going to one up this when I code this is basically make it so that uh, if any errors occur when loading stuff from the file, we're just going to dump anything we may have previously loaded. So if there's some error internally in the current file, it won't just partially load some books. It will just stop and not continue. It'll just make a blank list from this point in time. So, but either way, first thing for your try catch, let's make this bigger screen, move everything over. So everything's easy to read here. We have put your try, you have your opening and closing curly brackets to indicate the code that should be within where we're checking for any exceptions that may occur. We want to automatically have a catch statement down here at the bottom, which is where the errors will deal with this. And what I'm going to do is just have a catch all for now. I don't want you guys to go too crazy with this. It's just one basic try catch because again, you have multiple catches to deal with each different error. We want a way just to deal with if there's any exceptions that occur within this block of code, we want to go here. And that's where we can use the exception class. Ooh. Get Excel to spell it properly for me so I don't have any issues. Ooh. And nope, I didn't do that right selected the wrong one exception error give it whatever name you want from right here now if you haven't remember this we're going back to your exception handling just remember that in the design of the java language the exception class is the root parent class of any exceptions that come after it and this falls back into inheritance and the idea that this reference here can you catch or hold any other exceptions. So this is why I'm making a catch all that this here will catch any of the regular exceptions that are normal runtime kind of errors. And then we'll go into this case right down here. But we're okay. So, so far we need to do everything else we need to where we think an exception may happen has to be right here and we'll handle the exception down here. We don't want any code before this and right after this catch where you go back into normal flow, we're just going to leave this blank for right now, assuming that we'll leave this method. So if there is an exception, it'll come down here, go to here, and then exit out of the actual function. Next, we need to open the file. So scanner file input. Here. Now the scanner class for its constructor has multiple different ways that you can give it to say where it's going to read its information from. You've usually seen the system.in, which means the input stream that's coming from the console. Uh, you can give this other input streams. You can ironically actually even put a string in here and then read information out of the string. So kind of parsing it. But in this case, we're going to give it a file input stream. So for us to try opening a file, we'll use new file. 
right here, and we need to actually give it. I'm gonna complain, but new file. The actual path. And you can see Eclipse for me has automatically tried to pull in the one constant I have there, which this time is the correct one, is that DB file name, which again is that constant from up top here that we create a DB file name reading list. So just so I have a constant so I don't have copy and paste of the same hard-coded string everywhere else in the actual program. So we open this. Now what will happen is remember is that since this isn't a try catch, this statement, especially this part right here of open new file, if that file doesn't exist, this is going to throw an exception, skip over all code that's below this and go down to the actual catch. Okay. So we've got that so far. So what we know is, okay, if the file's not open, it's going to skip whatever code we do after this, come down to the catch. The catch is blank for right now. We've started the program. List should be blank with nothing in it at this time. And so, okay, we're okay. this is blank. We don't need to do any cleanup code. So just let it exit the catch, go here, and we'll go into the rest of the program. And it will have a blank list and continue perfectly fine. Do the requirements you've given us. After this, okay, if we've got this right and we want to start reading stuff and there's been no errors, we want to start going through every line in the file one by one to start reading stuff in. So perfect thing is we should first check to see is there any information. So no do whiles here. We should have a while that we do checking before we read anything. Is there even a line? Maybe the file's blank with nothing in there and we need to worry about that. So we need to use the scanner classes built in method for hases like has next line. I'm using has next line since we're told all the data is split up by lines, which means it's got that new line or carriage return at the end of it. And all we're checking here is, okay, this is, before reading anything in, is there at least one more line in the file? If there is, go in and try to read it. If there isn't, it skips over and should exit down from right here. Next, we should actually read the line in from the file. So make a temporary variable here just to hold it while we work with it. File input dot next line. Next line will again read in the entire line, read in that carriage return and give it back to us and it will remove the carriage return, uh, so the end line from uh, the string it read in. Uh, here afterwards what we should worry about is, well maybe when reading that line in that there's leading white space or ending white space that we don't need anymore. So right after reading in the line, I'm going to call the trim function on So this right here will return a string. And this right here will then trim off that extra leading in white space from this line. So we don't get any extra leading white space or anything else within it. And it's all cleaned up at this point in time. So if we have this right here is that in this variable, we should have the line that we've read in. Now I'm going to be extra paranoid and like even though I didn't ask you guys for any error checking is just presume like what if we ran a line that accidentally there were extra new lines from the in the file and then there was just like some white space and a new line. And so we could be sitting here and have a line that doesn't have actual book on it and it could be blank at this time. And so we don't want to go on to do anything else with it unless we verify that there's actually information in that line. So I'm actually just going to check in this case, um, there's other ways you can do this, but I'm just gonna use the length. And as long as we have greater than zero on that line, then we're good. And remember that for the string class, when you call the length method on it, so right here, so this dot length on this line, we are asking, okay, how many characters do you have in it? And if we have more than zero, that means we'll assume right now that we have something properly, there's at least some data within there. Okay. So far we've opened the file, we have checked if there's a line, we've read the line in, we've trimmed off white space, we've checked if there's actually any characters at all within that line, and finally if we're down here, we can go to actually parsing the line. So meaning splitting it up. Now in the assignment description, again, you're told that you have that hash character that splits the title from the author name, and you're guaranteed that the author name and the title of the book will not have hashes in them, just to make the program simpler. So you can go about any tools that you see fit for parsing the data. I'm just going to use the split method that's built into the string class. And the split method itself returns back an array. Right here. 
So we take the line that we've had, we call split, we give it the characters or character that we want to split the character up. In this case, we're only like the line up, uh, not this character. So we're doing by the hash. And so what this means, it'll take everything that's in line, it'll go up and split it into chunks, the actual like string into an array based upon every time it sees a hash character. And so what we know of that everything's come back properly is that index zero in this array should be the first thing it founds up to a hash, which would be the title. And then uh, after that index one, it'll be everything that followed after the hash, which will be the author's actual name from there for that book. But here we could again be that we had some characters, but maybe there's no hash right here. And we want to get that, okay, well, what if there's not enough indexes in that array? We don't want to start accident or it's going to start causing issues. So we should at least try to validate how many things came back in that array. And that's where we can use the length kind of field again this time on the arrays. So built in, we always have this built in length, which tells you how many elements are in an array. So in the size, the idea that the split method's making it, so this will tell me how many actual chunks did it find. And all we want is that as long as it's greater than or equal to two, so that we've at least got the title and the author name. Maybe there's some extra junk after that. That's by hashes that shouldn't be filed. We're not really worrying about that, but I'm just guaranteeing that before I go on to deal with this line is that we actually have two parts that we can actually access within that array itself. Boom, so we're getting along. Saving this, no errors so far. So again, if I recap quickly, we've opened the file, checked if there's a line in it, read the line from the actual file, removed white space leading, checked that there's actually characters in that line, split the line based upon the actual hashes, and then guaranteed that we've at least got two parse chunks that have come back in that array. And next now we can read the information out. I'm gonna put them into temporary variables just to make it easy to read. So we have parts at zero. So again, we know from the format that you've been told that the first thing that it should parse on the line is the actual title. Right here should come back. And then string author equals parts at one. So I'm putting them into temporary variables just to make this easier to read on the actual code and in the actual future parts here. And we're almost done before we can start validating things, but we should be a little bit extra careful. Uh, we don't know how things were typed first or something else that happened, but we have this string here. What uh, We should try to remove any leading or ending white space that may be before or after the title. So we'll call the trim method again now specifically on that string right there and do the same thing for the author just so that we don't have any extra white space that we're not expecting that could screw up our outputs or screw up the file in the actual future. So if we've done everything right at this point in time and it's passed all of the actual checks that we have here, then we should have the author and title from the file. And the idea from here then is then to go on to add it to the list. But that will be up to you guys to do. So really just making the book object getting this information into the new book object and adding it to our book list. What I'm going to do here instead is before moving on, I want to validate that yes, I'm actually getting the proper data and everything's good before I go to the rest of the program. And we could go through using the debugger and stuff like this to validate everything. So putting breakpoints and stuff like that. But I instead just want to do like a quick system.out.println just so I can quickly look and validate the small bit of data. And so I am just going to output, oops, seems like I can never type and talk at the same time without misspelling things. So I'll do the title, let's put like a little dash in between, plus author. And so this is when I output it, so when we're reading from the file and we get everything from right here, so we got title, we got author, we can see everything that was in the file outputted before we go on to actually add to the list and everything from there. Okay, and come back. Now, so far, like you can all use whatever IDEs you want, but when you're using different ones, you have to make sure that you place the files you wanna read in the right location. Um, for right now, if you're testing and using Eclipse, you we can go manually add the file to work with. So we have the one example here of readinglist.txt. And what you want to do, 
at least you can import it different ways but if we just drag and drop this file you want to drag and drop it onto the title for your actual project and not the actual source code because we're not adding it to our source code we're adding it to our project to work with and is this complaining or just going slow oh come on the things of just having a slow computer Come on. Why is this complaining? Okay. So when you drag and drop it and you drop it onto the actual title for your project so not the source it's going to copy it. and the idea is it won't keep it with the source code it won't keep it where the binary is where it compiles everything it'll keep it outside where it's going to be by default running the actual program and by default looking for files itself you want to make sure you're copying the file over we should see it down here on the bottom and then we can always see internally here what the lines are like so now if we go back to our book system and go and try running this, we should get outputs. If we get no outputs at all, first step that we probably got something wrong and we're going down to the actual catch statement. So book list, run. Boom, and so we can see here we've got the menu that would pop up after it's for loading. And then we can see that we did get all the files that we were actually expecting. So we should look, we should see three data structures, memory of light and the omen machine. And those are the three we expect with the actual names themselves. So we should be okay so far. Right here. Okay. So we are good. We're good so far. We know we've got the output. That's reading everything from the file itself. I'll just make this bigger so we just have the code. The only thing I'm going to add in a little bit smaller here is what if there's an error that happens in this code here while reading that then screws up is that I'm just going to use, I'm not going to mark for this, but I just have something happen is I'm just going to clear out whatever books we have loaded so far. So this is just so that if there was something wrong with the file, we don't have partial information, nothing else happened. So if we've gone through, loaded file, got down to this point, added it to the list, but then later on something was wrong with the file, then I'm just going to have it clear everything, which is kind of a nuke all. Uh, you guys can deal with this differently if you want, setting up different tries and cats just to play around with that. So maybe if it's just one line that's wrong, it only doesn't just not add that book and maybe reports an error. But otherwise, I'm going to have it just nuke everything and just move on and blank stuff out. So uh, this is bad for the user if someone tampers that original file, it'll nuke everything. And if they go close the program, it'll delete and lose everything. But here, this is just the beginning Java small program and we're not worrying about that yet. For you, for the rest of this, is you guys should be deleting this line from here and now going on to actually taking these, creating the book, and adding it to your actual book list. After that, if you've got everything, your menu should still be working fine and your quit should be fine. So now you just need to go through doing each one of these separate operations for adding a book, removing a book, and listing all books. And so remember when doing these is that use like set things up properly, put methods properly in the different classes that make sense to what they're actually doing. Uh, when reading from the actual user, use that user interaction that we created in the very beginning that we want to use to communicate with the user themselves. So when we have the actual menu, so you say you have this object right here, we may want to move it around. We want to actually go about and adding a book as reading and getting stuff from them. And that class has useful methods for you. So you should go look in the class itself and see which one you can use. Make sure you're doing all the proper error checking and then go through everything. And then down here for saving the file, I'm going to leave that up to you to go relook how to open up a file for writing to a file. And then you want to go through all your books and just write them out to the exact same format that it should expect for reading in. So that title, hash, then author name, and one book per line from there. And it should have everything done, so not too bad. 
Um, otherwise, from there, I hope you guys continue to do great as we deal with everything for the start of university and randomly changing fast deadlines since we're done one week and on to our second week and uh, halfway through semester and close to the end of the semester already. And you, you can now, once you've gone through this tutorial and started the coding questions, you can move on to the uh, asymptotic complexity videos once they're fully posted.